This video is brought to you by the Disc Golf Nerd Patreon support team. Go to patreon.com slash discgolfnerd. What's up guys, I'm the Disc Golf Nerd. I'm out here at Rooster Rock State Park and I wanted to get back to basics and explain some of the really fundamental stuff about disc golf that you guys might not understand if you're just getting into the sport. There's some terminology and some basic concepts that you wanna understand in order to just increase your knowledge base figure out what you're doing because once you learn how to manipulate the discs how they behave and all that kind of stuff disc golf just becomes more and more fun over time so for uh, demonstration purposes for some of these concepts I brought out with me my first ever disc this is a thumb track birdie by Innova I got this in 2006 as a uh, Christmas gift from my wife who I was dating at the time quite a while ago now but uh, yeah this thing Definitely served me well when I first started out. Not necessarily a disc I would recommend now. There's been so many great discs to come out um, in that time frame that I think do a better job, for, quite frankly. But the uh, Birdie definitely served me well when I first started out. And I thought it would be fun to just demonstrate some of the stuff we're talking about with my first ever disc. Since you guys are brand new beginners, that's who I'm making this video for. You may not even have a disc yet, or you just have a couple, or a starter set, or whatever it is. Let's go over some of the basics so you guys can understand what you're doing. So first of all, there are three main types of discs. You have putters, which are slow, accurate, they don't go quite as far as the other types of discs, but they are what you want to use to try to get in the basket. And a putter is what I recommend you start with if you're just starting out. Get a nice stable to understable putter and learn how to throw that. It's much more easy to control and throw accurately for brand new players and it'll kind of set you up with the right foundation to build on from there and try faster discs. That's really the only difference, because once you step it up to a mid-range, there's a lot of different options. Obviously, these are just representative of the, the whole type of disc. They are a little bit faster, for sure. We'll go farther than a putter. but they take a little bit more energy to fly on the intended angles. A nice straight to understable mid-range is a great way to start as well, don't get me wrong, but I think a putter is probably your best bet, or get both and try it out. Next, you also have drivers. This is the farthest flying type of disc. You can see it's much sharper, much flatter. You need to throw this with a lot more speed and spin in order to get it to behave the way it's intended to. So when you're first starting out, I definitely think putters and mid-ranges are the way to go. And once you get used to your throw and you understand what you're doing a little bit, step it up to some drivers. But those are the three core types of discs. There are a lot of different variations on those types of discs. So I have reviewed over 200 of them right here on this channel that you guys can check out. Or if you have any uh, specific disc-related questions, you can leave those for me in the comments below. So one of the most important things when you're first starting out is how to grip the disc. And for me, I kind of hold it flat like this into my right hand. I kind of like it to be pretty parallel into my palm. And then you wrap your fingers around like that. And I often put all four fingers on the bottom like that. Sometimes with a putter, I will stretch out my middle finger onto the bottom here like that. But you want to have some fingers tucked in on the inside rim, kind of similar to that. You want to avoid having your thumb too far out to the middle of the disc. You want to avoid having your thumb off the edge. Anywhere in here that feels comfortable for you and you feel like you're releasing it where you want to, that's all fine. But the most important thing is to have a nice parallel angle so that the disc kind of matches the angle of your throw and also to have those fingers on the underside rim. My grip on a mid-range will look something like that and then I'll use the same exact grip for drivers. The only time I'll really switch that is if I'm either fanning it out on the bottom for a more of a finesse throw where you can kind of just kind of lightly tuck your finger here. These are out onto the bottom of the disc and that gives you more of a kind of a finesse accuracy type throw. But also for putting, you're gonna have a different grip for putting much more similar to that where this is my putting grip where I have the fingers kind of fanned out. This one's on the rim. The thumb is a little bit more towards the middle of the disc and that just allows for a little bit more accuracy with putting because it's a much different motion than throwing a disc. Oh, 
So, once you have your grip established, now we can move on to a couple of other terms that are pretty common and things that you should definitely know when you're starting out with disc golf. This will be considered a flat throw, okay? The disc is parallel to the ground. If I want to throw on a flat angle, I reach back straight and I pull through straight right on that angle and keep it on that angle all the way throughout the throw. Once you have that considered to be a flat angle, you have the nose of the disc, which is the leading edge that you're throwing. You also have the wing of the disc, which is the opposite edge of where you're holding it, right? So this would be the outer wing. When you're holding the disc like this, this over here would be your wing angle. So this is how you change the angles that you're going to throw. So flat here, if you tilt the wing down, this is a hyzer. Okay, so if you hear the term hyzer, that's what that means. It means you're throwing with the wing down. Now we're back to flat. If we take the wing and we throw it with the wing up, this is now an Anheuser angle. If you throw on this angle, it will produce a shot that will go from left to right. Also, if you're lefty, this would be an Anheuser. Once again, all to do with the wing and not necessarily the direction the disc will fly because now for a left-handed Anheuser, the disc will go from right to left. So it's all based on spin. When you switch hands, the, the direction that the disc will spin changes and everything becomes like a mirror image. Okay, so I know that's a little bit confusing, but I think you guys can understand that. The nose is this leading edge of the disc. When you hear somebody say you want to throw with the nose down, that's what that means. If you throw and your nose is pointed up in the air like this, and you throw on a sweeping motion, a lot of players, when they're starting out, will do this. You'll see the disc go up and sweep and fall out of the sky on that hyzer angle. That is a very common mistake and problem for all players. It's difficult to throw truly nose down. It's a, a, a thing that you're gonna work on, and I'm always working on it. Everybody who plays disc golf has those, those times where they throw more nose up than they want to. Depending on the shot, it could be a good thing. And that gets into a lot of different nuance that we don't really have time for now, and that's the kind of stuff that you'll learn as you get more experience. But it's definitely important to try to keep that nose down. You don't wanna throw it straight down because obviously that's just going to go into the ground but you don't want to throw it with that nose tilted up because then the disc will want to go up stall and fall out to the left two very important fundamental terms and different things you need to understand in disc golf are the words understable and overstable this fuse is an understable disc straight to understable disc and then this culverin is a slightly overstable disc so there are understable discs there are overstable discs and then there are neutral discs that really just hold those angles. So if you put it on a hyzer, a neutral disc will hold the hyzer. If you put it on an Anheuser, it'll hold the Anheuser. If you throw an overstable disc flat, its natural tendency is to go out and hook to the left. because that is the way the disc naturally wants to fall based on the, um, the angle of spin, the direction of spin. So with an overstable disc, it's something that you can throw flat and it will not veer off to the right at all. It will hold straight and then it will finish out strong to the left. Because due to the direction of spin, that is the angle in which it wants to finish and get back down to the ground. So an overstable disc is trying to fight being thrown a little bit and it wants to finish and land onto that angle of spin, which for a right-handed throw means it'll go out and it'll finish out strong to the left. If you guys are starting out and you've thrown an overstable disc, it's pretty obvious how it's gonna behave. One of the reasons why people really like overstable discs is because they are very consistent. You know what it's gonna do. You can throw it flat, it goes left. You can throw it on hyzer, it holds that, it goes left. You can throw it on anhyzer. And since it's kind of fighting that and wanting to get back to its angle of spin, even if you start to get it to go right, it'll bend this way, it'll come out and finish back to the left. That's considered a flex shot, where you throw an overstable disc on an Anheuser angle, force it to go to the right, and then when its natural tendency kind of kicks in, it wants to finish back to the left. So that is how an overstable disc will behave. An understable disc is the opposite. So when you throw an understable disc flat, its natural tendency is to want to turn to the right. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. 
So when you're seeing flight numbers on a disc, you have speed, you have glide, those are pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure you guys understand those. I have videos about flight numbers if you're not sure about that as well. But then you see the turn is the, the, the next number there. If it's a negative number, that means the disc wants to turn. So it will turn to the right naturally. You don't have to put it on Anheuser angle. An understable disc, you can throw it flat, it will naturally want to go to the right. Now some of them might go to the right for a while and come out, and that's all the different types of nuances and how you build all the different types of shots that you need to play disc golf. That's part of the fun, is learning how to control your discs and get all kinds of different fun angles and throw accurate shots. It just feels really good when you know what you're doing. So an understable disc, you can throw it flat, it'll naturally go to the right. If you need a disc that will definitely hold that Anheuser angle and fly left to right all the way, an understable disc is what you want. And also, you can throw it on a hyzer angle for a hyzer flip or a flip up shot. That's uh, definitely another thing you guys might have heard. A hyzer flip means you start with an understable disc on a hyzer, throw it on that angle, and it will flip up with that natural turn. So rather than being thrown flat and having it turn to the right, you start it down on this angle and the natural turn makes it tick up to flat or varying angles in there. So that's a great way to get a straight shot is to throw an understable disc down on a little bit of a hyzer. It will come out, stand up, and fly very straight. Well, that's all I got for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, just leave them for me down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. In just a moment, you'll see an end screen. It'll give you the option to subscribe to the channel for future content if you wish. And you can also find my disc golf tips and information playlist with many other beginner related videos in there. Thanks for watching. I'll check you later. Cheers.